so I'm a brand strategist there, which means I do graphic design, I do concept development, uh, project development, that sort of thing. Um, and Convej is a marketing consulting firm, and we work with clients to produce podcasts, to produce video series, to develop their story so that their community can better understand what it is that they do and, and what their purpose really is. So um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn was acquired by uh, Microsoft three years ago, and they currently have 600 million users on their platform, and 40% of those users are daily users. So it's essentially the ultimate professional social media platform. This is where you go when you want to show off that you are a forward-thinking person within your industry. You can catch up on the trends. You are able to network. You're able to connect with people within your industry, within other industries, and even your role models and people that you really aspire to, to act like and to produce content like within your industries. And this, I was just talking with Kristen here. This platform, I like it so much because unlike Facebook, you don't have to worry about the trolls. You don't have to worry about people making nasty comments on your posts or um, maybe not handling themselves in the most professional manner possible. That's what makes LinkedIn so special. It's, it's a platform that allows you to be more personable, but in a way that represents your company and yourself in a professional manner. So unlike your website, for example, on LinkedIn, you get to have that dialogue with your community members. You can post a video or you can post an article, for example, and then you can have people commenting, you can message them back and forth, you can hear their thoughts on the matter, and it starts a relationship. And within LinkedIn, the, the main essential purpose is to network, right? So I don't have business cards on me ever anymore. And when I go to events, LinkedIn is the first place that will go. That's essentially my contact list now. Instead of carrying business cards or putting them in my contacts, I go right to LinkedIn, we connect, and then a week later we end up having a full-on dialogue about either the event or something completely irrelevant. So this is a platform that really allows you to be able to represent yourself and your company in a professional manner, but also in a relatable manner. And at Compedg a lot, uh, we talk about the fact that we don't want to sell, we want to tell. How can you best tell your story, your company's purpose, your own purpose, in a manner that doesn't make people immediately defensive and feel as though they're getting a sales pitch? We talk about the fact that people don't connect with companies, but they connect with other people. You relate to people through common things and, and through similarities and things of that nature. So how can you make your company feel as personable and relatable as possible. Give it human-like characteristics. Think of your company as if it were a person. What would it act like? What would it talk like? What would its hobbies be? Who would your company be? And what is the purpose that it's serving? So how many people, I'm curious, have a LinkedIn profile? Nice, nice, nice. And how many people have the standard blue banner? Guilty, guilty, <laughs> yes. So that's, that's an example of another great place within LinkedIn that you can give a personal touch, whether, whether you're representing your company through that, that banner picture or yourself through that banner picture. Um, elements of a great LinkedIn profile would include a good and professional profile picture, something that's well put together, something that represents yourself in a positive way. Also, a, the banner photo, so instead of having the standard blue one, put something in there that has personality, right? And then a summary text that gives yourself a, a good introduction to what they can anticipate seeing within your page. And the second that I go on someone's Instagram, uh, not Instagram, LinkedIn, <laughs> LinkedIn profile that I've just encountered either in person or through connections on LinkedIn, I scroll down, see how active they are, and the more active the person is, the more likely I am going to be to want to connect with them because they're pre presenting themselves as someone who's a thought leader in their industry, somebody who has something worthy to say, right? So whether that's through video or through articles or simply sharing other industry leaders' content from the other profile, it says something about who the person is. It says that they care. 
we talk a lot to uh, students who are just graduating and, and they've all said unanimously that their teachers, that their mentors are pushing them to create LinkedIn profiles for obvious reasons. And if we, as people who are already in the industry, want to be able to connect with those people, we need to be on LinkedIn as well. If they're the kids who are coming out with fresh new shiny degrees and they have these forward thinking mentalities and are ready to change the world, then we need to be able to get in touch with them so that we can hire them, bring them into our corporations, right? So essentially it's the perfect platform for us to be able to network, meet people within the industry, connect with future leaders, and also have a lighthearted personal touch to your company, to yourself as well as a professional. And you can think of it as uh, a website that allows you to have continuous dialogue with the people that you've connected with. <coughs> so on our company, LinkedIn, Competch, we have for 160 episodes now, so 160 weeks, we have one new episode every Monday. In that weekly series called Noyes Rose de Magispiro, you see the highs, you see the lows. It's okay, you don't need to. <laughs> You see the highs and you see the lows and everything in between that, that is going on within our company. So something that you might think boring, but uh, new office furniture. We're taking over a new floor within our company. So we showcase that. It makes it so that people can relate to us. It's interesting. They're along our journey of us, you know, big yinoyes, bros, and my kids, bro. So there's a perfect platform for us to share really quality, very high quality video content. And the reason that we do video content and not uh, mainly articles, which we produce articles as well, but we're lazy nowadays. We'd rather watch something as opposed to reading something, right? And by watching something, you're more, more of your senses are being stimulated. So you're looking at the person, you're seeing the way that they use their body language. It's something that's much more engaging than simply reading an article. And in your industry, for example, something that might be kind of challenging for people to understand, a software like the ones that we just saw, could be potentially challenging for people to grasp the concept of what it is that your product can do for, for their daily lives. How can your product better the lives of your customer? So instead of um, maybe having an article on your page, on your website's blog, you could create a video where you you interview another client of yours that is already using this content and you hear them talking about how this service has bettered their lives and how much it's you know increased their profits and whatever it may be. It's much more engaging than reading an article series. I'm curious, who would rather learn about something through video or articles? So video? Sure. Yeah, short video, exactly. But that's an interesting topic that you bring up because we've been told though people's attention spans are so short these days. You're, you have 15 to 30 seconds and that's it, they're clicking out. They're swiping up, you know. We find that that's not exactly true because if you're able to deliver really high quality content, something that is going to give them value, they're gonna learn something from the video that they watch. You can go 10 minutes maybe. Test the waters, right? So most of our episodes are eight to 10 minutes long. We have about 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel right now. So it's something that does take more effort producing video content, sure. But it's something that your, your audience and your community is going to be more engaged with. And, and a lot of the time at CompEdge, that's our main objective, is how can we create ambassadors, people that are so passionate about the work that we're doing that they're going to talk about it around the dinner table with their family and then the next day with their coworkers as well and then maybe with their buddy at the gym. Creating these people that are really passionate about what you're doing and therefore telling other people about it. Thoughts so far? No? And again, back to LinkedIn. The great thing about LinkedIn is it's free, right? What's, what's stopping you from, from really going all in on creating an account that can only better people's perceptions of yourself and your company. So the more engaged and the more active you are, the more people are going to trust the content that you're putting up. They're going to say, okay, this, this person is very engaged, this person has experience in their industry and therefore I should pay attention to what they're saying, right? 
And also tone of voice is something that's really important to remember. So one day don't post about uh, HIPAA compliance and then the next day do a food selfie of your lunch or your avocado toast. It has to be consistent with your brand, your personal brand and or your business's brand. And same with videos. Our series is, you know, we begin the ways of the Marcus Pedro. So that's what you can expect to see when you tune into our episode every Monday at noon. Yes, we switch it up when it comes to the thoughts that we're provoking from people or the initiatives that we're trying to tackle within that series. But all in all, it has the same tone of voice. And also on all of our uh, employee profiles on LinkedIn, we've cohesively come together and established a tone of voice that represents who CompEdge is. So now all of us know that when we go and host speeches like this, or you know, Frederick here goes to record for one of our clients, then they know how to represent themselves, they know how to act, they know how to caption the post that Frederick will do of this video that he posts on his profile. It's cohesive and it's really consistent. So I think the most important things to think about when you're attending to your LinkedIn profile is probably consistency, go all in, and then go from there, right? Absolutely, to other platforms, video series, podcast series, really the possibilities are endless. And it's all about what you said, scratching outbound and focusing on inbound. How do we create this community who's gonna do the work for us, essentially? They're gonna see this content, they're gonna talk about it to their friends, talk about it to their family, and then you don't have to place phone calls anymore, right? So that is the initiative and that's the idea of it. But it really comes down to you being willing to put in the effort to maintaining and keeping a consistent tone of voice on your platforms and all of the content that you push out.